Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, Father, in each one of our lives, that we are so privileged and honoured to be your children. And right now, as we come to your word, Holy Spirit, I ask, acknowledge you as the greatest teacher and revealer of truth, and I ask that you think through my mind and speak through my mouth and let your words go forth, not in my own human understanding, but in demonstration of your spirit and power that the faith of your people will rest in you and your power. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. God has wonderful things for us. Today we come to what God wants to speak to us as He prepare us for one more, even more wonderful things to happen, one good things to happen in each one of our lives. Blessed is the one who chooses to see God, the goodness to see the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. Every one of us know that we all got eyes, right? This is a, a artwork of eye. <laughs> okay. Beautiful, right? For those who like art. All of us got eyes in the physical, we can see. But what today, all, if each one of us have been born again, we have spiritual eyes, right? Our spirit man, we are tripartite being. We have a spirit, a soul, and a body. So the spirit part is the one that contacts God and see God. So our physical being, all got eyes, all can see the physical things, right? You see, uh, today I saw a, a doctor's report <laughs> of someone, right? all in the physical, correct? We see each other here. First thing we see is the body, right? <laughs> can you see the spirit? Uh, but you can feel someone's spirit, right? So today, when we are born again, our spirit man has also got the five senses, all right? spiritual senses of seeing, hearing, touching, sensing in our heart, feeling, discernment, tasting. Mm. So today we're going to see on the aspect of seeing, right? So in the natural, we say what we see is what we believe. I see got money in the bank, then I believe I am rich <laughs> or I feel that I'm rich, right? So, but today, because we are born again, we have spiritual eyes to see God and who we are, right? So, we'll, I'll explain all this, yeah, the title. Okay, let's look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. So, if you are serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. So, all of us have been born again. Bible tells us that as Jesus rose from the dead, we rose with him. So, we have, we can live a resurrection life. Okay, but then most of us, if you live the normal life, you'll say, I live normal. Ah. <laughs> Every day I didn't rise up <laughs> to, the he to the heavens and all that. That's a physical realm. Okay, but in the spirit, okay, that's how we want to know how do we actually live this resurrection life with all the promises of God. Okay, how does it manifest in our everyday lives? Say, so, but in order to live this, how many of you want to live resurrection life? Yes, right? We are here because we want to live this resurrection life that Jesus gave us. And on the 26th of August, we have a water baptism, which signifies for those who are going through the water baptism, beautiful uh, brothers and sisters here, right? We are going to go through a, 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 a baptism whereby it's an outward expression of an inward experience. In your spirit, you experience the death, burial of your old man. And then when you come up from the water, it's the resurrected life. Okay? A new life that you're going to live on this earth. All right? And how do we actually live it? So the Bible tells us, or Paul tells us in Colossians, pursue the things over which Christ presides. All right, go for the things that Christ is ruling over. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground. Absorb with the things right in front of you. Okay, so this is very normal, right? <laughs> Both, most people just live in this physical realm. It's just that we didn't know 
that there is a spiritual realm that we can live in. Okay, and you saw all the men and women of God, the, the well-known evangelists, pastors, preachers. How come they live like in another realm like that? Every day they're conscious of God, right? They can live above the situations and circumstances of this world. But most Christians live, I'm hungry, I eat food, <laughs> right? I'm tired already, I'm sick, all in the physical realm. But the Bible says we are spirit being and we can overrule over sickness, over disease, over lack. So how do we live? Pursue the things, right? Don't look at just the physical, okay? Of course, you have to open your eyes, otherwise you will drop into the drain when you walk. Okay? Don't, don't go med close your eyes when you are driving, okay? And then say, oh, pastor said you must uh, meditate. Then you driving, you close eyes, okay? That one is, <laughs> okay, being not, uh, being foolish, right? We're talking about your spiritual eyes open, okay? Just like Elijah had, Elisha had op spiritual eyes open, can see fire, okay? But what do we are we going to see today that is going to help you enjoy this life that God has given us? Look up. Very important. <clears throat> look up. Okay? Look up means from your spiritual eyes, look up. Because we are born from above. And be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. So most believers, right, are very alert on what's going around <laughs> this world, right? Many can tell you what is happening in uh, uh, Australia, uh, US, or whatever, what in Malaysia, but they don't have no idea what's happening <laughs> around Christ. And we are the supposed Christian, right? The one who have Christ. That's why today I was as teaching the uh, hidden man of the heart, the revelations from Hebrew letters, has caused me to see even more clearer why the Jews are such a blessed nation, a people, right? Through their, all along in their heritage. Yeah, because they know they are special, right? They know they are a special people with a God who is their God, right? And they're given the Torah instructions, all the promises, the covenants belong to them. They know they are special. When they want direction, they know who to go to. <laughs> their God, okay? And their God will tell them what to do, what not to do. And there, they get the blessing. So the Jews have the Torah, have their God to guide them. And they know they are special and we can see the evidence of their blessing, of God's blessing upon their lives. But the Christians, <laughs> the new creation, after getting saved, have very little idea of who they belong to. Okay, Mostly they think I belong to a church if I uh, put my membership there. <laughs> and that's the just one uh, building or organization. And when they need direction in their life, they are a bit blur. So go to the... Uh, the world there, whoever is teaching about success in life or what, they just go. They have no idea who their God is. Isn't it sad? Yeah, but the Bible tells us that you, Elijah, Elijah, are sitting next to each other, <laughs> right? Belong to God. The God of Abraham, the God of the Jews is the same God as us. So when we study them, when I was you know, studying them in these few years about the Jewish culture, which I never in the past didn't really study that much, it caused me to realize huh, what we have missed out as Christians, right? When we don't even realize we are the special peculiar people, right? That in Hebrew, the author says, you are a holy nation, a peculiar people, those who are born again. And we say, oh, we are very strange. <laughs> no, we are special. The treasure of God, just like the Jews. And we envy the Jews. Actually, the Bible says the Jews look at us in Christ. And they're supposed to envy us, right? Because we have Christ, we have Jesus. We receive the blessings by faith, by believing. They have to do it by works. Yeah? 
So let's see those how these wonderful privileges, right, that we can come into as well. Okay, each one of God's children. Look up and see what is going on around Christ because the action is around Christ. <laughs> and the whole world is going to turn their eyes to Jesus very soon because the Bible tells us it's time for Christ to return to this earth as King of kings and Lord of lords. And that second coming will be to the Jew, Jewish nation before he comes again to sit at the uh, temple as the, their king, right? The church, the, the, those who are saved by grace, including certain Jews who have received Christ, will all be caught up first in the rapture, right? To escape, in a way, the uh, tribulation, the hard times that are coming to this earth when God is coming to judge the earth finally. But those who belong to him, who acknowledge him as their Lord and Savior, their King, all will be taken up in the rapture. So he is go that is the most exciting action that is going to happen. <laughs> Don't look at the internet or news and just look at what is happening in the world and forget what is happening in the spiritual realm. The angels, the warriors, the are all getting ready to come down to this earth. Whoa, if God will give you in your spirit that revelation of what is happening in the spiritual realm around Christ, you can't sit still anymore <laughs> because it's, it's, it's so exciting. All right, and we look into the world news, we think, oh, the economy is, get, is bad, just had COVID. Don't know what's the next virus coming, earthquakes, wars, economy dropping, got job, got no money, how? Oh, Christians are not supposed to look at that. We are aware because all these are the signs to the second coming, right? And it is definitely very, very near in terms of even just years, okay? Because every prophecy has to be fulfilled to the dot, in the Bible. And the second coming is already within the calendar of God for the Jews, right? It cannot be delayed beyond a certain time, right? And we are living in these end times. Everyone, men and women of God, are looking up. So don't look down. <laughs> okay, because we are not going down, we are going up, yeah? So the rest of our time here is given to us, yeah? God wants to bless us to be a blessing and to save more souls yeah before that day comes so and how see things from his perspective okay so if we can see things from his perspective our whole life will change right that sickness that we thought we have all these years seeing from the doctor's perspective from our own perspective right According to God's perspective, it doesn't exist at all in the spirit. That's what it means by whoever is in Christ is a new creation. All old things have passed away. What is an old thing? A sickness is an old thing. A, a thing that was inside our body before we got born again. Right? That is an old thing. A sickness is a disease from the old nature from sin from adam that is an old thing so when you get water baptized you realize when you go down that old thing died with you that old thing that is written in the doctors or your medical record has passed away yeah that is what it means it is no more there if we see from god's perspective whatever thing that is happening in our body that is not normal it's an old thing of the past, yeah? And if we can see what God says from his perspective, we will live the abundant life that Jesus said, I come to give you the new life, all right? Okay, so it's all about seeing, isn't it? We see the thing, we believe. We see got no money, we think we are going to suffer physically. But if we can see what God say from his perspective, ah, 
things are going to happen, wonderful things, miraculous things. An interesting thing about perspective is that it's subjective. Okay, so this is written by someone, a little bit of it. So talking about perspective, how we see things, right? The glass of water is there, but whether it's seen as half full or half empty is a matter of choice. A joke that illustrates this, <laughs> I like this joke. Two women were catching up with each other. That means they were talking, right? Nu, how's your daughter with her new husband? So we can say, Rebecca. <laughs> so uh, uh, Hannah asking, you know, uh, someone asking Hannah, right? How's your daughter with her new husband? I'm not asking Hannah, asking Rebecca. Oh, sorry, who? I'm confused already. <laughs> Hannah, okay. Okay, oh, he's such a prince. Oh, so Hannah got a, a son in law, right? New one, one year old already, right? <laughs> and I say, he's such a prince. Ooh, he takes her out to dinner. Got not, Rebecca? Got her. He lets her shop as much as she wants. Got not. <laughs> and then he treats her like a princess. Wow, that's why you see Rebecca so happy, right? Okay, then. And ha then, how's your another uh, asking the same question to the husband side, okay? The mother-in-law. <laughs> how's your son and his new wife? So this is Rebecca's mother-in-law. <laughs> Oi, what a situation. She make him order her dinner. <laughs> Spend all his money shopping <laughs> and expect to be treated like royalty. Oh, so same, right? It's the same couple, but one is from the mother of the girl, the other one is from the mother of the boy, right? Of the husband. So, see what's going on here. The implication is that couples are exhibiting identical behavior, but due to perspective, there are two starkly different attitudes. So it's how they see the whole thing, but it's actually the same thing, right? You all can see. <laughs> okay, so seeing from perspective is very important. Okay, how we see will be, become how we feel. So this one, the mother-in-law feel miserable <laughs> that the son is being used by the the wife but the other side the mother-in-law the mother of the girl feels whoa so wonderful my girl is being treated like a princess okay so one feels happy the other feels sad all right because of how they saw the same thing that actually happened okay perspective is very important matthew 6 uh, 22 to 23, Jesus said this, your eyes are windows into your body. If you open your eyes wide in wonder and believe, your body fills up with light. Okay? If you live squinty-eyed in greed and distrust, your body is a musty cellar. If you pull the blinds on your windows, what a dark life you will have. This is what Jesus said. Right, how we see things. If we see, open our eyes, all right, and we fill with light, we fill with belief of what who God is, how wonderful things are, or even the mother, <laughs> right? Then he will she he will fill with light. She's happy. Oh, I'm so glad my daughter married this man. Right? But the other one, she saw differently, and she saw only the bad things that happened to the sun, but actually it's not bad, but she saw it as bad, okay? So you see, if you, with distrust and greed, then you have a dark life. So that's why the, the mother-in-law feel miserable, but this is not the real, real case, huh? it's only a joke, <laughs> okay? So you're pulling blinds on your windows. There's no more light, okay? So how we see is very, very important. Okay, so, Learning from some Hebrew letters, all right, which have much revelation, because Hebrew was God's uh, language and the language that God created this universe. The letter for I or seeing is the letter Ayin. It's the 16th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, okay, with a 
numerical value. So in the Hebrew, you have uh, letters that have value, numbers have meaning. Okay, so it, the, the numerical value is 70. This is very interesting as we go along. Okay, it means the meaning of ayin, all right, basically means eyes or sea, eyes, all right, and salvation. Okay, and this is the shape and picture of the letter ayin. Okay, another story, yeah. <laughs> Rabbi Elisa ben Aya, that is the, the Hebrews, the Jewish people in Judaism get a lot of stories, right? And then when I saw, as, as I said, we were studying Judaism, the Jews, I just see how they are so blessed within the Judaism, although it's a religion, but it is from the Bible, right? They, they, and their, their culture, right? All within their God, right? As was asked to become Nasi or head of a prestigious Torah academy. Okay, you understand? So this rabbi was asked to become the, the leader or the head. And after discussing the opportunity with his wife, she said, but you have no white hair. <laughs> Here got a lot of white hair. <laughs> okay, today got three white haired men. Okay, praise the Lord. They say you got no white hair. That is, you are only 18 years old. So this 18 year old young man was asked to become the leader of this Torah academy. But the wife said you got no white hair. How? It's disrespectful for such a young man to lead the entire academy. So their culture is whoever is to lead must have white hair. <laughs> what is the significance of this white hair? Okay. All right. Go we'll continue. So now what is a sign of someone old enough to be worthy of respect? Right? It's just like you have a professor and then in your school or university, and then he looks like 18 years old. You know, will you listen to that fella? <laughs> will say, oh yeah, what can he teach me, you know? Yeah, but when you see, oh, like Elijah, Nathaniel, Elijah is the professor there, will you listen more because got a lot of white hair? Ah, means got, supposedly means got a lot of wisdom, right? They have lived long enough. So, must have white hair. So no need to dye already huh? after today's sermon. <laughs> no need to dye the, the hair black. Okay, that day a miracle occurred and 18 rows of hair in Rabbi, that young 18 year old uh, guy, Eliza Ben Min Sun, beard turned white. <laughs> so the Jews always have beard, right? Yeah, so apparently a miracle happened and he the, got 18 rows of white hair in the beard. That is why after accepting the position, Rabbi Eliza ben Azariah began his opening address with the words, <laughs> I am like 70 years old and not I am 70 years old because now he got white beard. He looked like 70 but he is in actual fact not 70 and the people listen to him <laughs> okay because he got a bit of he got a white hair i am like 70. okay this is uh, interesting in the letter ayin uh, we will come more to it later so from the bible you have some scriptures all right that talk tell us about seeing all right the or actually it's ra'a Though the Lord gives you bread of adversity and water of oppression, yet your teacher will no longer hide himself, but your eyes will constantly see your teacher, which is actually God, right? The Jewish people, right? The prophet was talking to the people. Yeah, some, the, some, they are sometimes very naughty, right? The children of Israel. <laughs> learning about the Jews is just like learning about us. <laughs> right we sometimes follow god sometimes it's obedient sometimes rebellious sometimes lord thank you god sometimes forget god and that's the nature of the children of israel okay but the prophets were speaking on god's behalf and they said your eyes will see your teacher your ears will hear a word what eyes what ears this is the spiritual eyes and spiritual ears this is the way walk in it whenever you turn to the right or to the left. Today we have the Holy Spirit who is supposed to be the one telling us this way or that way. Alright? And we're not 
go to someone else to look for direction. You know, another uh, thing the Holy Spirit spoke to me is the Jews are so blessed because when they need direction, they go to their rabbis. <laughs> they go to their God. They don't go to the Gentile. Got it? Yeah, they are not allowed to go outside their God and their community, right? But today, Christians, <laughs> after God saved already, <laughs> go out, outside and look for direction. Who should I marry? Who, what business should I do? What job should I take? Asking for counsel from people who don't know their God or who got born again but still don't know God's ways. How foolish. That's why we end up dropping into the drain many times, right? Right, Because we don't realize that we have a God <laughs> who is interested to guide our everyday life, right? What to do, where to go, but we never consult Him, right? That's why we make a lot of mistakes. So the Jews, even though they were not born again, God blessed them by telling them, you follow the Torah. You just follow the instructions there and you will be blessed. And they follow. Those who didn't follow, then they go out. Ah. That's why they eat the bread of adversity. Okay? But if those Jews who follow, they are super blessed. All right? Today, we also have not following by law. That means you have to in order to be blessed. Right? But when we realize we've been born again, we have a new spirit, a new heart. God's desires and God's ways and instructions are put inside our heart. That is the new covenant, isn't it? The new covenant in Hebrew says what? A new covenant I make with the house of Israel that I put my laws into their heart. So we don't need Ten Commandments to guide us inside our heart. We just don't feel that we should do this or do that. And we also have been given a new nature, right? A new nature, that new desires that are holy, that are righteous, that want to honor God as all of you came today not by force, right? Nobody put one gun at you <laughs> telling Mei Ling, you have to come here. If not, bang. No, right? It, God, Holy Spirit put a desire into her heart to say, I want to come to worship the Lord, to hear Him, to know Him more. Right? He has put that his instructions now into our new heart, born again heart, right? And that is how he wants to lead us. Remember, I shared about the Holy Spirit. God sent the Holy Spirit. Actually, it's not just to stay inside us, but to be our guide, to be our counselor, to be our helper. How many have you have experienced Holy Spirit helping you? guiding you, speaking to you, telling you, this is the way, turn right, not turn left. If not, that means we have not really used the Holy Spirit. <laughs> right? But he came, right? Mei Ling got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Means he wants to come into your life to guide you, to speak to you. Sometimes you may not know the, the word yet, but the Holy Spirit works inside here to give you that unction, you know, to feel, eh, hey, this is not right. Oh, this is what I want. He will tell you. And then from the word, it will confirm with what the Holy Spirit put inside your heart. He is here to, to help you. Your ears shall hear, your spiritual ears. All right? Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. Today, yesterday I talked about Jesus, Malak, Jehovah, Malak. It's king. How many of you have seen the king, the <laughs> physical one? Not yet. No, you will see him. The Bible says, Right? But today, we see him as king inside our spirit, yeah? inside our heart. That's why we honor him right? with our tithes, with our offerings, with our time, with our love. Right? They shall behold the land that is far off. Are we Christians are, are ones that God has put vision inside that you can see afar your unbelieving friend doesn't see what is ahead. They cannot see the future, right? They only see what is happening on this earth today. What is happening in my house today? Everyone is fighting. 
<laughs> with each other. They cannot see right, the plans and purposes of God. Each one of our hearts is put inside us, right? Uh, eyes to see the rapture, to see the blessed hope, to see that He is coming, right? The world cannot see. Can we able to tell someone? I, I can see it. Paul, after he got converted, he already talked about rapture. Even at time that was 2,000 years ago, he already saw in his spirit. That's why he is the one who told us about rapture, the blessed hope. He already saw. Today, we are living in the end times and believers cannot see. <laughs> we only see the normal day-to-day -day happenings. Yeah? So if we can see the future, we can tell someone what's going to happen in the future. We don't need to let them go to the medium, the BOMO, right, to tell them what's going to happen next. Huh? The Bible already tells us, and it's our spirit man with the spirit eyes that can see the future, right? If we go to Kim, go to God, your God, Elisha, wants to reveal to you things to come, right? As well, you have the prophet Joel in the Bible, that says what? In the last days, he will pour out his spirit upon his sons and daughters. They shall prophesy. Old men shall dream dreams. Young men shall see visions or see pictures in their minds. And all these visions and pictures come from the word of God. Okay? That Jesus, the king, is finally coming. But he has already come in our hearts if we have crowned him as king that means we will want to be his subject let him rule right they shall behold the prophets means the prophets of god are the ones who can see afar ah those who cannot see afar are like blind as a bat <laughs> blur blur don't know what's going to happen all right and then the bible tells us what's going to happen okay the glory of the lord shall be revealed means revealed revelation. That's why we are studying the revelations of the Hebrew words and letters, right? Open to us, to us who were used, used to be blind, used to be only seeing the physical, right? And all flesh shall see together for the mouth of the Lord have spoken it. So let's come back to the, so this is a lot about seeing in the Bible, right? And it's spiritual seeing. So about the letter ayin, so you see from your eyes or from the nose? Eyes. <laughs> okay, get this clear first, right? So we have spiritual eyes. Only one who is like 70, so the story, right, just now of the 18-year-old young man who was chosen to be a leader and he said he is like 70. One who has, so in the Judaism, for them, their culture, one who has refined each of the seven emotional attributes can reach the level of seeing godliness in the world. So their leader is someone who's supposed to be able to lead them to God, correct? The rabbi. So that means that rabbi at 70 years old have certain already refined, there are certain attributes in them that other people want to learn from. Okay, so these attributes cause them to or would have, uh, they would have reached what they call a level of seeing God. So the young people cannot see God, right? <laughs> Even the Jews. So the older ones, at least at age 70, that's what they believe, have gone through and able to see God and show them who God is, lead them to God. That's why they lead the academy, right? Okay, uh, for the Juda Judaism, i just share briefly a little bit. The 10 building blocks of creation for them, three of the 10 levels reside in the dimension of the intellect, which is wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. So a person supposed to have wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Okay, And we know that as you grow older, you're supposed to have more wisdom, <laughs> more understanding, and more knowledge, right? It comes with age. So definitely a young person of 18 years old won't have that much wisdom and understanding and knowledge as someone who is 70, 80, 50, right? Who is older, okay? So, and seven, seven occupy the dimension of the emotions, love, fear, mercy, victory, praise, acknowledgement, foundation, bonding, severity, speech. So, this today in Christ is the fruits of the spirit. So, an older person in the Lord, 
So you have an old person in the body, all right, your natural age, and you have spiritual age. So for us today, we are talking about spiritual growth. So even though your body, like for uh, Brother Nathaniel, he is physically 70 plus, right? Yeah, but he just received the Lord about a month ago, isn't it? Yeah, so in the spiritual age, he is a young child or a baby. Okay, so we see spiritually different from physically, but he would have gained some physical wisdom from this world at his physical age of 70 plus. Then we have uh, Elijah, 60, Elijah 60 plus, Elisha 80 today, today, right? 80. And then we have Uncle Henry 90. Okay, so as far as concerning the wisdom of this world, right? The uh, knowledge, wisdom, a little bit of all these emotions of love or fear, they would have experienced more than the young Chiku, <laughs> who is uh, 10 years old, 20 or 30, correct? But now about spiritual, it's the same. The one who is spiritually older would have more wisdom and understanding and knowledge and also have the fruits of the spirit, love and all this uh, flowing through their lives. Therefore, they will be able to teach us about God. Correct? Mm. With this quality of insight, one can lead a nation to redemption. So in the natural, you don't really see an 18 year old boy or girl become the prime minister of a country, <laughs> right? Nobody will elect them, <laughs> right? Because they don't have enough wisdom, knowledge, understanding of this world in terms of their understanding of human, humanity and so forth that you need to rule a nation. Okay, so now we are leaders in the church of Jesus Christ need spiritual wisdom, knowledge, understanding, also the fruits of the spirit in order to lead the people of God. Yeah, the people of God, the new creation, right? So you cannot be going to a spiritual baby, spiritual one and ask them, lead me <laughs> to know God. They also say, I also don't know much <laughs> about God. That's why the Bible, uh, Paul, in his advice to Timothy, the young pastor, right, says that the novice, the new believer, cannot be appointed as a church leader yet, right? Because they are still baby, but in physical form, they may be already adult or older, okay? So we are talking about spiritual now. Right. <clears throat> Furthermore, Ayin stands for salvation. So one Ayin stands for I, all right, to, to be able to see. And then also it has another meaning of salvation. This rabbi name itself intimates a special salvation from God. Alaza in Hebrew means God is my salvation. Ah, Azaya means my salvation is God. All right, so I am like 70 years old. <clears throat> okay, Alaza, that's his name. For Rabbi Alaza or Ahaya, which means my salvation is God, had acquired all the qualities needed for leadership because God was his help and salvation. So even this young man, he may be only 18, but he has already acquired that level, all right, that is of leadership that is needed, which is he has certain acquired wisdom, spiritual. Okay, so it, if you may be a young child, like uh, Esther Ng, only 12 years old, right? But if she keep on learning and growing in the spirit, in the spiritual, she can be more matured than an older person in the natural. Okay, so spiritual, we cannot follow natural. So they say, oh, I am a 30 years Christian. Uh, at 30 years old, I received a lot, so I'm 30 years old Christian. No, <laughs> okay, different, right? That is your physical and spiritual different, okay? So he was therefore endowed with this royal quality of leadership at such an early age. That's why Timothy can pastor the church at a young age, right? Because spiritually, he has grown, all right? Has acquired some God's wisdom, God's knowledge, all right? And also bearing the fruits of the Spirit. And that's why Paul 
uh, a more older uh, minister advised Timothy, the young one in age, physical age, that let no man despise your youth because he feel I'm so young, young physically, but matured spiritually. All right. So we don't want to have <laughs> matured physically <laughs> 20 30 years still baby <laughs> spiritually so my heart is that everyone here grow spiritually okay there's nothing to be ashamed of if you are a new believer right but grow right eat and grow so you can see uh, very wonderful to see all every time uh, brother in uh, nathaniel come right as a young baby in the lord to come and grow right elisha coming and then elijah leading all right guiding the uh the young babies all right but they have white hair <laughs> okay you may you all have white hair in the spirit okay white hair is the crown of wisdom okay so we need wisdom as well in our spirit to grow <clears throat> and then to be able to lead others this then is the meaning of being a leader, to visualize, to be able to see redemption and convey this message to others. As such, one therefore transform the ayin of Mia to the ayin of Shema, where one can lift up one's eyes and see God. All right, so where your eyes now no longer just look at the physical realm, you are able to see spiritual realm, okay? And what is going to happen? What is happening in redemption? Redemption is about your spirit, okay? Because our we haven't died physically yet, but spiritually we were dead once, okay? Matthew 5, 8, what bliss you experience when your eyes is pure in the TPT. For then your eyes will open to see more and more of God. The Aramaic word used for see is nazon, can be translated in the present tense as they see God or the future tense, they will see God. The Greek is they will progressively see God. So as we grow in the spirit, as we eat spiritual food and let the Holy Spirit fill us, we our what is the first thing that will happen our spiritual eyes open the ministry of jesus to open blind eyes it's not just the physical blindness right more important is the spiritual blindness that we cannot see there is a god that's the problem right we cannot see that jesus is not religion but he is as real to you or more real to you to you than even your husband your children your father or your uh, son right he is more real that's why here i'm not teaching you a set of rules and regulations of how to be a better christian but to know jesus that when you talk about him to someone you're not talking a religion can you try to believe Jesus? <laughs> no, you talk like you talk about your husband that you love so much, your wife that you love. You know Jesus? He's with me. He's the one who healed me. He's the one who talks to me. He encourages me when I feel down in my emotions. Have you experienced and able to talk about Jesus like this? Or are you still talking about Jesus like a religion? This is the reality of Christ. Are you talking about Holy Spirit? The worst people not even know who in the world is this Holy Spirit. <laughs> and after 20 years of being a, a, a Christian or having born again, you still have not interacted with the Holy Spirit. Very sad, right? And the Holy Spirit has come to help us. But good news is, we are moving forward to our eyes being open to know Him. To know him, all right? To know the as we experience those who are heart, that means the pure in heart. Today, all of us have been given a new heart. You're all pure in heart. You're made pure and holy. Okay? So that our eyes can open and see more and more of money. <laughs> when we see more money, we're very happy, right? Oh, got money coming in. But the Bible says, Jesus say, when your spiritual eyes open. We see more and more of God. Physical eyes open. We see, we want to see more money. <laughs> That's why Jesus said you cannot serve money, mammon, and God. 
But does it mean God don't give us money? Let's see. No, God will give whatever you need. If we will see more of God, then we can see more money. <laughs> that will not destroy us. All right. See God first. Our eyes, spiritual eyes open to see more and 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 more of God. Right? Like the Jews. Okay. The Bible says in Psalms or King David, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. What do you want to see? The aspect of God. Why are we learning all the Hebrew names of God? Right? It's to see our spiritual eyes to see that the Lord is Jehovah, yud heh vav heh is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in Him. Today, title, Blessed is the one who can see, who chooses to see that the Lord is good or the goodness of the Lord. So here is a magnifying glass, a picture, right, of all these letters in all the things that happen in our life. Can we put together the word Kaset here, Haset in Hebrew means goodness, favor, right? Many times, we, if you want to play Scrabble, <laughs> we see we use the letters. We put death la, die la. You know, we see all the the bad things. Sick, no money. <laughs> you will see all this. But if we the Bible tells us to see what, see that the Lord is good. Haset. Next time you should play Scrabble and see what what words you all see. <laughs> if you can see the goodness of God has said, He loveth and Psalm 33, God loves righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of worries, <laughs> full of sickness, pain, disease. Full of the psalmist can see. That the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. But why do we see failure, disease, pain, right? stress, worries, no money, when the Bible tells us that this earth that we are all living in is full of goodness? It's the only thing that we didn't see. <laughs> Need spectacles, special spiritual spectacles, right? To see if only we can see. Goodness means in Hebrew is hased. Just now the, 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 the word that we saw, right? Hased. In all the letters when we form words, what do we see? We are told David saw the goodness of the Lord even while he was in trouble, right? He was being uh, pursued, betrayed, killed by his own son or all the troubles that he go through. Maybe none, none of us actually have gone through that also. But he said, the earth is full. Right? If you have a statement to put, what would you put? The earth is full of dot, 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 dot. For Rachel, she would say full of food. <laughs> because she likes food. Right? She can see the food and then the others cannot see. What do you say? Full of Full of struggle. Uh. My life is full of struggle. This earth, uh, uh, yeah. master, uh, finish. Right? What do we see? See the goodness of the Lord. God is telling us to look up. Look to Him. See what is good. See what do you see in your family? What do you see in your work? Uh, yeah. This irritating fella. <laughs> Actually, this irritating fella is the goodness of the Lord sent to you to help you grow the fruits of the Spirit. <laughs> to mature in your life, to, to take out all the thorns in your life, irritate you. The Bible, the Bible says iron sharpen iron so that you can be wow, refined in your character and be a blessing to others. Okay? But we see, oh, this one irritating, that one irritating, ah, that one problem. We see all the problems, okay? But God said the, the goodness, faithfulness. Have you seen the faithfulness of God? When we look at the money, do you see God's faithfulness? Or we see this month still not enough. Ah. Next month still not enough. Ah. What do you see? Or you say, thank you, Lord. You're so faithful. This month I can pay all my bills day to day. Right? What do we see? God's kindness, God's faithfulness, all the lack and the sickness. It's up to us to see. 
Because when we see, we will enjoy those, the goodness of the Lord. The Lord God is like a sun and a shield for his people. He is kind to his people and he gives glory to them. To those who do what is right, he gives every good thing that they need. Can you see properly? <laughs> Can you see? Shall I magnify this? <laughs> right? As long as we follow him, all right, like the Jews follow their God, who is our God, but he fo they follow uh, in a legal way, legal, legalistic way, but we follow out of love. He gives every bad thing. Oh, if you need help, Jesus threw you more sickness. <laughs> is that what the Bible is saying? God will give you more pain, oh, more problem. He will give you until you got no money and then you have to go become a beggar. <laughs> No, the Bible says he gives every good thing that they need. You need money, God will give you money. The only thing is seek him, right? Go to him, honor him, see what he's telling you to do. That's all. And then he will give you what you need. Paul says the same thing in Philippians, right? My God shall supply all your needs. When we come to God, it looks like believers are saying, God, you don't really care what I need. <laughs> so I have to go and find my own provision. The children of Israel know how to stay within the confines of their laws, right? Of God, what is set for them. They don't go out of it. And therefore, they remain blessed. Deuteronomy 28. Their basket is blessed, their store is blessed, their womb is blessed, right? Because they stay within the confines of what God has set for them. Believers today, new creation, we are even more blessed. If we will realize, right, that our God, Matthew 6, Jesus said, I'm your heavenly father. Don't worry about the things that unbelievers worry about. If we can only have a revelation, eyes open to see what Jesus is saying, Huh. We will not live another day worried and thinking about finances and bills and all that, right? Is this is our God who wants to give us every good thing that we need. But understand the word ayin or the letter ayin is connected to our will, correct? Just now we have the perspective. We choose what we want to see, right? The, the mother-in-law <laughs> choose to see the son being bullied by the wife, but the, the wife's mother choose to see the, the daughter being blessed. Okay? So it is the ayin in the Hebrew, this letter, is talking about the evil eye on one side. So that's why we have two eyes physically to represent spiritually as well. We can choose to have the good eye, all right? that sees the tov, the goodness of God, the evil eye that sees all the bad things, and we choose what we want to see because this is connected to the will. Okay? So it's up to you to choose. Right? All has already been opened. Redemption has already been done. Meaning, Jesus Christ paid the price for all the curses to be removed from our lives if we would follow him. If we would choose to see and receive the goodness of the Lord. Right? It's up to us. It's just like salvation is now open to everyone in the world. But those who choose to believe in Him experience salvation. Those who don't choose to believe, they say, ah, okay, lah, never mind. Lah. Doesn't experience salvation. All right? Understand? So we choose, we have a will. So I, teach, I taught in the session teaching on the heart, all right? The new heart. We have now choosing from our wills because we are not made robots. You can choose from our new heart, a new spirit, or we choose from the old one, the unrenewed mind. Okay? Uh, another person, Soren Gard, tells the story of two young portrait artists who both sought to capture the essence of beauty in their paintings. One artist looked high and low for the perfect face of beauty, but never found it. Tragically, he later gave up painting and lived in despair. Very sad, right? As an artist, right? He was looking for the perfect beauty, but he cannot find. 
So he was despaired, all right? Despaired or uh, stressed or uh, what is the word? Depressed. The other artist, however, simply painted every face he saw and found beauty in each one. Now here's a question. Which of the two was the sincere artist? As Anthony de Mello once astutely noted, we cannot see goodness and beauty outside of ourselves if we fail to see it inside of ourselves. The second artist had beauty inside him. Right? He saw himself in himself beauty. Therefore, when he looked at others, he saw beauty in every single face. Probably the first artist never thought much about himself all right, and was looking for the perfect beauty. Therefore, he couldn't find that perfect beauty because there is none. <laughs> Only Christ. So, this understanding of choosing, the way we choose to see is ultimately a spiritual decision. Okay? Each one can choose. The sages say in the, in the Jewish culture, sages is an old man all right, who has gained wisdom, Whoever has the following three traits is among the disciples of Father Abraham and whoever has three different traits is among the disciples of the wicked Balaam. Balaam is an uh, idol god, right? an evil god. <clears throat> okay, so those with a good eye, okay, remember the eye, eh? a humble spirit, a lowly soul are the disciples of Abraham, forefather. Those with an evil eye, which is arrogant spirit, greedy soul, are disciples of Balaam the wicked. So how to, for them to distinguish between the evil and the good, all right? The good in the natural or for normal people is to, to be humble. Okay, everyone knows that, even not a, a Christian, okay? That is good, hum, a humble person is a good person, right? A lowly person, and that's like Abraham. So the proud one, the arrogant one, and the greedy person is not good. That means their eye is not good. According to these sages, the difference between the disciples of Abraham and disciples of Balaam turns on the presence or absence of three midot qualities of the heart. The most important of these is ayin hatova, the good eye. Okay, that means the difference between disciples of Abraham and disciples of the idol God is their eye, is their good eye, or the evil eye. So what makes a person good or evil is their eye, how they see, okay? The eye of Abraham, what is the good eye? Is a metaphor, uh, is this a metaphor for Polyanish? This you probably might go uh, come across in the world, right? Remember the world motivation take a lot from Bible, just minus of God. Therefore, <clears throat> to play the glad game by finding the good in every circumstance, no matter how difficult. So in the world, the world tells you, right, to find the good, be positive, think positive. However, we are not propagating think positive. I'm not at all. Okay? The world doesn't have Christ. So in order to overcome, right, the depressions of life or uh, all subject to sin, they have to hype themselves up all right, with their mind to think positive because the mind is connected to the emotion, isn't it? The thoughts that you think will give you the relevant emotion. So when I mention money, everybody smile. <laughs> okay, right. So that is how we think. If I have money, a lot of money, all my problems are solved. Isn't that the, what we have grown up with and could be still thinking? But the Bible didn't say all your problems are solved if you have money. It says all your problems are solved if you have God, Jesus in your life and know who he is and who, who is able to do. See, sing it. <laughs> we don't realize. Okay, so... The world teaches positive thinking in order to control emotions. Why a person commits suicide have the emotion of wanting to die? Because their thoughts saying that I got no more money, I owe the along, I owe this, I owe that, owe that. I, I cannot live anymore. So the emotion of depression comes in. And then the fellow wants to 
go and jump down. Right? Despair. So the world does not know, doesn't know Christ, or the devil is definitely not going to lead them to Christ, but try to help people from committing suicide or having these emotions of uh, death by telling them to control their mind or their thinking. If they can control their thinking, they can control their emotion. So, but to only a certain extent, it can happen to those who are very strong-willed or it may not last forever, right? You can, for a while, the hype is there, the people, okay, begin to control their thinking. Like it's actually like brainwashing. They just wash your brain, but they didn't wash the heart. <laughs> so the heart is still full, of, still full of guilt, still full of condemnation, right? Still full of unworthiness. So the mind and the heart doesn't tally. Eventually, they give up. But what happened in Christianity is Christ changed and give you a new heart first. Okay? A new spirit within you okay, that is born again. And from there, he says, now renew your mind. Change your thinking according to God's perspective. Not just positive. It is everything which is good, which is pure, which is holy, and which is right righteous all right not just po positive so this is the world okay is this what we are believing in reinterpreting all the facts of experience to support the notion that the best of all possible world no rashi says that one with a good eye esteem another honor as his own so this is good philosophy in the world all right that's why the world is what about trying to be good Okay, but remember, being a Christian is not trying to be good. Is yes, or oh, finally got it. <laughs> you have been made good. Don't have to try and try because no matter how you try, you cannot be good. Because Jesus, God, the Bible says that all have sinned. There is none righteous. No one. All born from Adam, all got sin one. Right. So religion is. Right? Everyone had some follow some religion before. Right? All tell you to be good. Right? Because they think that being good, that will bring blessing into their life. Right? But the only thing that religion cannot do, Christ can do. He made you good. Where? In your spirit. Your spirit man. Right? But only the mind, not yet aligned. That you are good. That's why... The teaching of the word is so important about the spirit man that now you are the righteousness of God. So Mei Ling can say, I have been made good. I, have, I am the righteousness of God because it's not what she do. It is what Christ did for you, right? So <clears throat> good things is to esteem others as yourself, as an eye that respect and value what it sees and the rambam, the Hebrew culture, the good eye is the ability of being satisfied with one's lot in life and be happy over the success of others. It's a free eye free from the spirit of envy or greed. This is in Judaism as a religion. It's also in all other religions. Isn't it? That teach you to be good, to be satisfied with your lot. Don't be greedy. Ah, but this is not Christianity. Oh, <laughs> why because christianity is not a religion it's not trying to tell you to be good there's nothing wrong that's why a lot of people say i don't need jesus or i'm a good person i do all these good good things i'm not greedy i'm not uh, people they teach you what uh, be happy when others are successful you're happy there only at home you get angry <laughs> it doesn't last because you are trying to be good it's it was your old nature. So you, we had Adamic nature, which is evil nature, sinful nature. We were born with that. Now the world tries to, the religion or the devil tries to help us to overcome that nature by trying to be good. And we absorb it. And we say, yeah, so that's why you have monks go and meditate. Right? See no evil, hear no evil, touch no evil. Try to be good. In the end, they think they can attain... Uh, or what, nirvana or blessing or peace. But the Bible says, no. 
cannot because the dot of sin is already there. Only Jesus Christ can remove that sin and make us good. So what are all these qualities? It is in 1 Corinthians 13. <laughs> this is given by him. 1 Corinthians 13, the love that is able to really be happy for others, right? that is not selfish, that is not greedy, is agape. It is God's kind of love. Human beings cannot attain to it. No matter what, there will be a limitation. They try, they cannot get it. That's what the Bible says. And you all have it because you were all born and given it. Romans 5.5 5. The love of God, agape, which is this kind of love, which is not selfish, basically, human love coming from Adam is selfish. No matter how you try to package it, <laughs> it cannot last because it is human nature is me first. That is Adamic nature, satanic nature. But God, Jesus came and took away that nature, the punishment of that sin, our sin, your nature, and gave us, whoever believe in him, a new nature that is able to love the way God loved us. That's why Jesus said, now love one another as I have loved you. These principles of being good, has got, they don't put Christ inside here. So they are trying to love one another and be a good person. But the Bible says this cannot which heaven, right? The other sages say good eye indicates generous spirit towards others. It is an outwardly directed eye that shines forth comfort and care to those in need. So therefore, there are a lot of people who try to be good to do a lot of charity, right? Generous. So they feel guilty. That's why they do a lot of charity, <laughs> right? It's a guilty conscience, okay? The, that sin giving them Oh, why I'm earning so much and that fellow is suffering and you, know, you feel bad even to earn a lot of money. It's all a result of sinful nature. And in order to try to clear that guilt, they give away as much as they can to charity. And then for a moment, they feel better. <laughs> Isn't it? You ask anybody who, is, who does a lot of charity. It's to appease that guilty conscience inside them. But today, that guilty conscience has been removed by the blood of Jesus. When one comes to Jesus and acknowledge that I'm a sinner, thank you, Lord, for forgiving my sins and taking away this guilty conscience. And we don't have to live with it anymore. Right? And we can live holy and righteous, depending on Him, right? receiving His life inside us. His goodness, His generosity. You have all been born again with a generous heart. You are not giving because we feel guilty. You are giving because you have a new heart inside you that wants to give, just like your Heavenly Father gave Jesus for us. Jesus gave. Right? If we still give out of guilty conscience, whether it's tithing or offering or whatever, to the poor, we have not realized okay, that Jesus, that we have been born again. Right, that this guilty conscience has been removed. Therefore, we can give cheerfully, joyfully. That's why God says, I love a cheerful giver. Right? Giving now from our heart is because I want to, not because I have to. Generosity is part of our nature. To be generous It's not because of reason or logic. Why you give to someone who is rich, already got a lot of money, but God said, honor the person. Right? It's not because of guilty or whatever reason we try to appease ourselves. Okay? It's following God's nature and direction. A person with a good eye looks at things from the perspective of love. So in the world, they teach you love each other. <laughs> a lot of cults also come up with that, right? Love, flow with love, right? whatever organization that they say love without Christ love is still human love which is <laughs> filial love right which is not the highest kind of love which can fail which is limited it's still human right it is not God's 
perfect love. Ayin Hatova looks at circumstances, especially other people, and finds something beautiful. So this is within Judaism religion. Okay, they don't have born again experience. Huh? Remember, but they are taught all these things. All right, which is to love one another, to be charitable, to do sidaka and all that. Okay. Mm -mm. This, there is no trace of competition, no envy, no malice in a good eye. There is no harboring of resentment or bitterness. It also in all religion. You know, religion teach like that, right? Elisha, correct or not? Religion, religion, Buddhism, whatever, all teach this, right? To be good, right? To be generous, don't harbor resentment. But does it work? <laughs> At the end, Go back home. <laughs> all, all the anger come out. All right? It doesn't work because sin nature is still there. It's people, men trying to be good to reach God. But in Christianity, Jesus Christ, He come into you, Elisha, and He gave you His love. These are the fruits of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 13. You don't have to try. It is your nature. You don't have to try. You understand? It's no more... It's effortless when we re reckon and realize what happened to our spirit man. And we meditate that God's love, okay? When we try, it's very fake. It's only, that's why people are fake, because they try to be loving. And then after that, after you leave them, they go, uh, you can see, oh, yo, the ugly nature come out <laughs> in their family, right? In their temple all come out. What's that? It's trying to be good. <clears throat> right? It's trying to use the good eye. But today we have been given the good eye. A, a person with Ayin Tova does not speak ill. So he's telling religion okay, of others. I bring this out to help us see what is in religion and what is in Christ. Right? Because if I just tell Christ, 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 you still blur, blur. <laughs> nothing to compare, nothing to realize what Jesus has taken us out from. Religion. So don't preach Christianity as a religion because Jesus came to take us out of religion, right? But the Jews have to have it because they don't have Jesus yet at that time, okay? So they have these religious uh, instructions to keep them into the blessing because the evil eye will bring curses upon them. The good eye overlooks the defect of others and sees the virtue and value of a person created Elohim in the image of of God. So if you are still trying to do this, you haven't understood what is a new creation in Christ. He already made us like this. We are just working out our salvation, living it out, living the love out, letting his love flow out. All right, renewing this mind. The mind tells you you are a mean person, you are a selfish person. Uh, sometimes parents tell their children, you are selfish. Today in Christ, that nature has been removed. That's why we parents, Christian parents, or those who knew creation, will tell their kids what? You have the new nature, right? When they misbehave, you are, have God's, God's love inside you. Not telling them, don't be naughty, don't be selfish. <laughs> Not like that, right? They need to know, just as we adults need to know, that we have been recreated in Christ with a new nature. Okay, it takes some time for it to manifest. But the first thing we need to understand is the revelation that you have a new nature. Okay, and all these things that religion try to do is not Christianity. Okay, it's not being the new creation. But they are still lost. Okay, the scripture declare. The one with a good eye will be blessed. So that's in the Bible, right? The Hebrew word translated generous actually means to have a bountiful eye. It's all got to do with the eye, right? You say, how do you know you are greedy? Your eye, ma. Your eye look at, oh, the person so rich. <laughs> how do you start to cover? It's your eye first, right? Your eye begin to look at something and you want that thing. That is the evil eye, right? But the generous eye is someone to have. The generous means a bountiful eye. 
when you are generous to the poor, you are enriched with blessing in return. Second Peter 1 3. Everything we would ever need for life and godliness has already been deposited in us by his divine power. You read properly, yeah? Everything we could ever need for life and godliness has not yet been given to me. <laughs> oh, that's how we actually think, right? Oh, all that we need in life, huh? God, please give me, please give me, please save me, please help me, please give me a job, please give me money, please give me. Yeah. What the Bible say, already put into your account, deposited already. Your spiritual account has been given. That's why we need spiritual eyes to see. Otherwise, we only see with our blind physical eyes. Everything again, everything, and let's everyone read. Everything we could ever need for life and godliness has already been deposited in us by His divine power. So you got it already, not Elisha? Yeah, everything. What is everything you need in life? You need help, right? Huh? You need money, right? You need food, right? So, Bible says that everything that we need, God knows what we need in this physical earth as well. You need all these things already deposited in you, in your spirit. First, the spirit. The spirit needs to catch it. I'm already healed. I'm already wealthy in Christ. And then only the manifestation will come. Divine power. Okay? Not, please heal me. Please give me. Please help me. It's all been given to you. And whatever is alien in our body, when we believe this, will begin to shrink, will begin to disappear. The virus disappear. Whatever is not right in our body, although it takes some time, it will disappear eventually when we realize it has all been deposited. You can withdraw. Meaning, money is already with you. Ooh. Where? Is it the one, the money they burn for the people at the funeral? <laughs> no, that means your spiritual account, you have access. That is when we need that money, God will provide. It is not a how much money do we need to feel secure? Each person, some people will say, I need 10,000 in my account, then only I feel peaceful. Some people say, I need 100,000 first. If you are in Christ, your bank account is in heaven. Jesus, what did he, he is it when he need the money to pay tax, he, he tell the disciples, go to the fish <laughs> this is the spiritual life where we can trust him all right and each day we don't worry because we know when i need it he will provide if he has to send someone from timbuktu to come and give it to you he will all right it has already inside your account all right all this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing him who has called us by name and invited us to come to him through a glorious manifestation of his goodness. <laughs> Before I come to this, suddenly this, this thing came to a deposit. So if you have a bank account in heaven, it depends on how much we deposited there <laughs> the, in a heavenly account. So we put that, we put that. That is our tithes and offerings, right? We put that, we put that. Then when the time comes, we need 10,000, we can draw because the interest rate is very high. <laughs> Up there, okay? You understand? Spiritual, natural, right? But when we are worried about natural things, we don't realize the spiritual. And the spiritual is present all the time. Right? God knows how to be, depends on what we deposit. Sometimes we want to draw, there's nothing there. <laughs> because we didn't deposit okay, to God's kingdom. Understand? It's His kingdom. All right? The spiritual, the tithe, the offering, it's not a law for anyone to do. 
It's an understanding that we are depositing into God's kingdom. And then you will able to have our eyes open because even in tithing, they have the ayin inside. All right, where I see the spiritual realm and that at any time you need, he will bring it to you. The angels go and check your account, <laughs> heavenly account. Oh, this son of God, daughter of God has deposited. Okay, so don't calculate the same way we calculate our bank's interest and all that. All right, even if it is it's $10 that you have and you gave that 10 as your tithe or offering, up there, I don't know, the, the conversion rate is very high. <laughs> Heavenly rate, okay? Yes, this is a spiritual. And one day, I know that, that Jesus is coming. All of us will finally see him and not depend, right? And, and not be blind anymore. All this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing him. That's why we, our eyes open, we can know him more and more. Yeah, in Ephesians, Paul said what? He didn't pray for people to get rich. He didn't pray for people, you know, to, to get well. He prayed for them to, for their eyes to open. That I prayed, Paul prayed for the church that your eyes may be open to see what are the riches of the inheritance in Christ, mailing that God has taught for you. What are the inheritance? What are the riches of his glory? Ah, if our eyes don't open, we cannot see anything. Who has called us by name? He called you by name. And invited us to come to Him, not to go to anywhere else. Go to Him through a glorious manifestation of not His badness, right? Not His curses, right? His goodness. The Romans says what? Paul says, God's goodness bring one to repentance. God is always wanting to give us good, to show us good. But if our eye is closed, we cannot see that God is a good God. That's why we hold back a lot of things from God. We dare not trust Him because we think from the devil's viewpoint, God is not going to help you. <laughs> from all the wrong beliefs in this world, you better take care of yourself. Nobody is going to help you. Are you still stuck with that belief that survival, if you don't take care of yourself, who is going to take care of you? This is a lie from he hell. And we have grown up with it and stuck with it. I, I, I need to take care of myself. You know what Jesus came to tell us? That you have a heavenly father who wants to take care of you. Isn't it totally different? I'm not talking about we don't work, we'll be lazy and all that, or irresponsible. But to come out from that lie of the devil, it, it causes us to be miserable in this life. You struggle with life because you feel nobody cares. You need to take care of yourself. You need to find the money. You need to do everything as if we are orphans. Isn't it? Isn't that what the Bible is saying? That you are not orphaned? When Jesus came, he tells us that you are no longer orphans. You have a heavenly father. And your heavenly father wants to take care of you if you will realize it yeah and go to him say come to him come to your father yeah and he will show you how to make money right he will show you how to be a responsible person he will show you his wisdom from the bible from his word the glorious manifestation of his goodness he will show you that he is a good father he is a good, good father. He is, wants to be a good father to Jemima, to Mei Ling, to Nathaniel, to Talia, to Ruth, Magdalene having a good sleep. <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? God wants to give him rest, Heavenly Father, to each one of you here. He is a good, good father. We can sing that song, Good, Good Father, and then we go back into our everyday life and we feel... God, how am I going to pay bill? How am I going? <laughs> we actually don't see him as good. Hmm? Open our eyes. All right. The goodness of God. I would have despaired. Psalms 27. That means I would have despair. Just now we saw despair, right? Fainted. 
we would be miserable, we want to commit suicide, we would have committed suicide, most of us. If I had not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And the easy version says, but I surely believe that I will see how good the Lord is. I will know His love when I go to heaven, <laughs> while I still live in this world. But it's for us to believe. It's for us to choose to see or not see. Right? If today you choose to see that God is good, that you will live long and you will see the goodness of the Lord, just like Job. Right? The latter days of Job were better than his beginning. Right? God gave him everything double that he lost. Right? Even in our mistake, we have failed, we got into debts or loans or whatever. If we will see that God is good, he will teach us how to come out of it. Yeah? Without stress. He will teach us that money is not the source of happiness. God is. Jesus is. We can rest in Him. Yeah? And this has been a verse that helped me along my uh, journey in life where I made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> but continued to believe that I will still see the goodness of the Lord. Because I made wrong decisions. Yeah, I caused a, a lot of... Uh, Problems came in, both financial, relationship, everything. But somehow, I continued to believe that I will still see the goodness of the Lord. And He proved Himself good. Right? He is the one who gives second chances, third chances. He is the one who wants to bless our life and turn everything for our good. All right? So this is the I, your ayin. If you still cannot see, put on spectacles. <laughs> okay. You see from God's perspective, okay? The lens of the Bible, the Word of God. And what are we to see? We learn from the name Jehovah. The Jews were told to see God. Yahweh, which we have been learning, consists of four letters. yud he vav he which is Behold the nail, behold the hand. And whose hand, whose nail? Jesus, if we come to see him, the gospel of good news, isn't it? Not bad news. Where we see Jesus already paid the price for good things to happen in your life. Who paid the price? Jesus paid. He paid already for our redemption. All right, for now, heaven to be open. Yeah, it, God couldn't bless because of sin. But today, in Christ Jesus, if you keep on seeing the word, sit on seeing what Jesus has done on the cross, blessings will come into your life. Right? And the last picture here, even God himself wants to write this ayin, which is the name of Jesus, onto our palm. Look at your palm. Right? This is some have already seen this, but forgot already. <laughs> Look at that. It's telling with your palm, you open, has the letter. What letter? Yud, your thumb. Then the letter Shin, the three fingers. And the letter Vav, which is the nail. Right? And then here, this part, Ayin. See what? Behold the nail, behold the hand, and Jesus the fire. This is the name of Jesus, Yeshua. Jesus is always there wanting to give you good things. If you forgot and think that something bad is going to happen, look at your hand and see this letter, Jesus' name engraved there. His name is already recorded upon your hand. Is Jesus good news or bad news? Good news. Good news means good things are going to happen. L and many is are already happening. If we will only open our eyes and see the good things that are happening. Not from a religious perspective, but from born again. From the new creation, from Jesus Christ. See, so remember, every time you forget that God is good or you're frightened of it, Certain things, bad things may be happening. Look at the palm and see. 
<laughs> see, see, you, Shin, Shin is the fire of God, the thief. The devil, ha Jesus has already destroyed the works of the devil, right? Fire destroys, right? So Jesus destroyed already. Jesus destroyed the bad luck already. <laughs> so some people say, oh, you are born on another what day, what day, all bad luck. Uh. Jesus destroyed the bad luck already, okay? So you see the shin, the fire burning, okay? Burn the sickness. Say, Doctor said, I got this sickness. You see the letter shin in Jesus' name? Jesus already destroyed the sickness, okay? Then you have the bath, which is the evidence connected to you, the nail, that nail all your sins, the guilt, all nailed to the cross, the sickness, the pain, the poverty, all nailed there. And then all you need to see is the ayin. So your eye, you have all the eye is to see this. <laughs> Don't see other things. Okay, this is your eye, right? The ayin. Ayin, look up, see the youth, which is the hand of God. The power of God, right? Can you see God's power? You see, oh, devil is doing all these things in my life. La. Devil is causing havoc, uh, taking my money, la, this and that. See the youth, which is the hand, fiery hand of God. The little that holds the Lord. Very powerful. See the shin and see the bar, which is seeing Jesus. Amen? Amen? Yeah. So we choose, okay? Choose to see goodness of the Lord while you are still on this earth. Amen. Praise the Lord. God has wonderful things for us.